Buddha or Gautama Buddha, also known as Shakyamuni Buddha, was a great, extraordinary spiritual master from ancient India. Born as Prince Siddhartha Gautama in the fifth century BC, he would have naturally inherited the vast wealth of a kingdom. However, the prince left the palace life in search of spiritual knowledge. After years of contemplative seeking, the Buddha attained great enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. He then shared the merits of his practice by providing a method for other sentient beings to be freed from the cycle of death and rebirth. Rich treasury of Buddha's spiritual doctrine on universal truths is studied and revered to this day for its deep wisdom and compassion. The Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra or Nirvana Sutra is a Tathagata Garbha Sutra of Mahayana Buddhism. It is considered as a major Mahayana Sutra. The actual date of the original Sutra is not known. However, it is said that its early texts may have been written before or during the second century CE. The complete original Sanskrit text of this Sutra is lost with only remnants of a small number of fragments. But the texts in Chinese and Tibetan translation are in existence. The sutra was translated into Chinese twice, namely in 416 CE by Faxian and in 421 CE by Dharmaksima. The translations are apparently from two substantially different source texts, and the difference is in their teachings on Buddha nature. The Dharmaksima's version states that all sentient beings have the potential to attain Buddhahood, while Faxians indicates that some will never attain Buddhahood. The Dharmaksima's version is more popular in East Asia and is influential in the development of East Asian Buddhism. Chapter 15 On the Parable of the Moon The Buddha said to Kasyapa, As an example, there is a man here who, as he sees that the moon is not yet out, says that the moon has departed and entertains the thought that the moon has sunk down. But this moon, by its nature, does not sink down. When it appears on the other side of the world, the people of the other side say that the moon is out. Why? Since Mount Sumeru obstructs vision, the moon cannot reveal itself. The moon is always out. It has, by nature, no coming out or sinking down. The same is the case with the Tathagata, the alms deserving, the all enlightened one. He manifests himself in the three thousand great thousand worlds, or he gives the semblance of having parents in Jambadvipa, or of entering Nirvana in Jambadvipa. The Tathagata by nature does not enter Nirvana, but all beings say that he truly enters Parinirvana. The case is analogous to the sinking of the moon. O oh, good man, the Tathagata, by nature does not possess the nature of birth and death. To succor beings, he manifests his birth and death. O 
good man, on the other side of this full moon, we have the half moon. On this side, we have the half moon, and on the other side, the full moon is seen. The people of Jambadvipa, when they see the first moon, say that it is the first day, and have in mind the idea of a new month. Seeing the full moon, they say that it is the fifteenth day of the month, and entertain the notion of the full moon. But this moon has truth to tell, no waxing or waning. Only due to Mount Sumeru does it show a semblance of waxing and waning. O oh, good man, the same is the case with the Tathagata. In Jambadvipa, he manifests birth and enters Nirvana. His first coming out, appearance in the world, is the first of the month. Everybody says that this boy is first born. He strides seven paces. This is like the moon on the second day, or he shows himself studying. This is like the moon on the third day. He displays renunciation. This is like the moon of the eighth day. He emits the all wonderful light of wisdom and subdues an innumerable number of beings and the army of Mara. This may be likened to the full moon of the fifteenth day, or he manifests the thirty-two signs of perfection and the eighty minor marks of excellence. He thus adorns himself and manifests Nirvana. He is like the eclipse of the moon, thus what beings see is not the same. Some see a half moon, others a full moon, and still others an eclipse. But this moon, by its nature, knows of no waxing or eclipsing. It is always the full moon. The body of the Tathagata is like this. For this reason, we say eternal and unchanging. So next, O oh good man, for example, by the full moon everything comes out, appears, in all places as in towns, hamlets, mountains, swamps, on the water, wells, or ponds, and in water utensils, the moon manifests itself. Beings may be traveling hundred or hundred thousand yujanas, and the moon always accompanies them. Common mortals and the ignorant think loosely and say, I see all such in the castle town, in the house, and here in the swampy ground. Is it a true moon or not a true one? Each person thinks about the size of the moon and says, It is like the mouth of a cattle. Or a person says, It is like a wheel. Or some may say, It is like forty-five yojanas in size. All see the light of the moon. Some see it as round as a golden basin. The nature of this moon is one in itself, but different beings see it in different forms. O oh, good man, the same is the case regarding the Tathagata. He appears in the world. Man and God might think the Tathagata is now before us and leaves. The deaf and dumb see the Tathagata as one deaf or dumb. Diverse are the languages which beings speak. Each thinks that the Tathagata speaks as he or she speaks, or thinks, and my house, the Tathagata received offerings. Or a person might see the size of the Tathagata as being very large and immeasurable, or someone might see him as very small, or a person might mistake him for a Sravaka. Or a Pratyaka Buddha or various Tithikas might think and say, The Tathagata is now in my line of thought, following my line of thought, and is practicing the way. Or a person might think, The Tathagata has appeared for me alone. The true nature of the Tathagata is like that of the moon. That is to say, that it is the Dharma body, the body of birthlessness, or that of expediency. 
He responds to the call of the world, being innumerable in his manifestations. The original karma manifests itself in accordance with the differing localities. This is as in the case of the moon. For this reason, the Tathagata is eternal and unchanging. Also next, O good man, Rahula Azura Raza covers the moon with his hands. The people of the world will then say that this is an eclipse of the moon. But Rahula Azura Raza cannot cause any eclipse to the moon. He merely obstructs the light of the moon. The moon is round. There is no part that drops away. Only as a result of the obstruction is the full play of light checked. Once the hands are withdrawn, the people of the world say that the moon has regained its power, or say that this moon suffers a lot, but even hundred thousand Asura kings cannot cause its suffering. The case is like this. The same is the case with the Tathagata. Beings give rise to evil thoughts about the Tathagata cause blood to flow, commit the five deadly sins, and act as Ixantikas. Things are shown in such a way, for the sake of the beings to come, such things are displayed as acting against the Sangha, transgressing Dharma, and causing hindrances, Maras as innumerable as hundred thousand billion cannot hope to cause blood to flow from the body of the Buddha. Why not? Because the body of the Tathagata is not possessed of flesh, blood, sinews, marrow, or bones. The Tathagata truly has no worry of disintegration. Beings say Dharma and Sangha have broken, disintegrated, dissolved, and the Tathagata is dead. But the Tathagata by nature is all truth and there is no change or dissolution with him. Following the way of the world, he manifests himself thus. Also next, O good man, two people have a fight with a sword and staff cause bodily injury and draw blood and death results. But if they had no intention of killing, the karmic consequence will be light, not heavy. The same is the case here. Even in relation to the Tathagata, if a person has no intention of killing, the same applies to this action. It is light and not heavy. The same is the case with the Tathagata. To guide the beings in the days to come, he displays karmic consequences. Uplifted viewers, thank you for your company on today's selection from the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana, Chapter 15, on the Parable of the Moon, Part 1 of 2, on the Words of Wisdom.